Hey guys, Nick here and welcome back to another video and another DaVinci Resolve 16 tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at slow motion and sort of like how to create a slow motion clip out of something that was filmed in 24 frames a second or 30 frames a second. So normally when you want to put something into slow motion in post, you want to film it at like 60 frames a second, 120 frames a second or more. And that's because you can slow it down to the viewable speed of that video, whether that's 24 or 30 frames a second and it will play back in like two times or four times slow motion. That's the technical aspect of it. But sometimes when you're out there filming, maybe you've forgotten to film it in 60 frames a second or 120 frames a second, and you've just got this standard clip that you do want to slow down. Well, how do you do that in DaVinci Resolve and get a usable result? Let's jump in and I'm going to show you how you can fiddle around with some of the settings in DaVinci Resolve 16 and get really usable footage from doing exactly that. Okay, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve and I have three clips that I've filmed at 24 frames a second. I've got me cracking an egg, I've got a friend of mine flicking her hair, and then we've got a rock dropping in the river. And if we select the clips and have a look at their metadata, you can see 24 frames a second, 24 frames a second, and 24 frames a second. So let's have a look at what would happen if we were just to slow these down as standard. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slow each of these clips down. So I'm just gonna highlight the first one, Command R or Control R, change the speed 50%. So I'm gonna slow it down by half and I'm just gonna do that to all these clips. Awesome, so now they are all slowed down. So if we play them back, you can see, there we go. And we've got the rock going in the river there. So they're all slowed down. The thing is, is that the stock standard slowing down method, I guess, or retiming method used in DaVinci Resolve is what's called nearest, okay? This is the one that comes default built in and that's what's gonna happen. So if I use my arrow keys on my keyboard to nudge forward, so if I go one frame, two frame, one frame, two frame, one frame, two frame, what you can see is that every frame has been duplicated to extend it by 50%. So to slow it down by half, to make it half speed, basically it's just duplicating each frame and that's how you get it to go all slow. And that's also why it's so choppy when you watch it. So if I, same thing here, if I nudge forward, as you can see there that every frame has been duplicated and that's why it kind of looks a little bit choppy. But we can sort of change how that has been interpreted. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna select all those clips. In our inspector, go down to the, we're gonna be scrolling down to retime and scaling and we can change the retime process from project settings which is set to nearest which is just default for everybody so let's have a look at optical flow first all right so what optical flow is is basically an algorithm where it kind of interprets the frames in between so now if we watch this back hopefully you can see that it is a lot smoother we can go through here it looks a lot smoother and we watch this one here the only thing wrong with optical flow is that if there's a lot of movement and a lot of detail, you're gonna get some artifacts. And this clip here is a good example of it. If you have a look at that hand there, some weird stuff going on. If I nudge forward, some weird things going on there. But if I, you know, if we play back here, this clip looks pretty good. There is a little bit of weird artifacting around the hands, but it's not too much. And this clip here is actually generally pretty, pretty good. And if I was to use, well, there we go, there's a bit of weird artifacting there. And if I was to use the arrow keys, you can see that, you know, it's duplicating, it's, it's sort of, it's interpreting what would be in between those middle frames there and doing the best it can. And optical flow I find works pretty, pretty well. But obviously, as you can see here, if we look around the hand, there is a little bit of weird artifacting going on like there and there, like there's some weird things going on where it just isn't quite getting it. And that's sort of to be expected. So I find that if optical flow doesn't work, and you might find that it does for some of your clips, DaVinci Resolve has another option. We're gonna highlight all those clips. We're gonna change it from optical flow to frame blend. And it's a similar method to optical flow, but essentially all it's doing is taking the first frame and then the second frame, I don't know, kind of like blurring them in between each other. So if I was to nudge forward, you can see that every frame has an extra image but it's really not too drastically different. So if we play this back, you'll find it's a little bit choppier than optical flow, but with none of that artifacting. Okay, so it is a little choppy, 
But if we have a look at the hand here, there is none of that artifacting going on that we had that if we were to change this one to optical flow, all right? See, we get that weird artifacting going on around here. It's kind of, you wouldn't be able to use that at all. But then if we change it to frame blend, we get a really relatively good result. Now there are a few other options in here. So we can change the motion estimation here. So we can change it from project settings, which is generally set to standard faster. So you're just gonna get the fastest interpretation of those frames. We can change it to enhance better. That's gonna slow that process down, but you'll find that you'll generally get a smooth result and speed warp, which is again, it's better than enhance and you'll generally and with a smoother result, something that you can generally use. So we select this clip and we change it to speed warp. And playing around with the settings is the best way because obviously every clip you do is going to be different. Actually enhance better seems to be working better there. And then if we change that to enhance better and playing around with the other ones as well, I find that if we go to scale, uh, sorry, resize filter and change it to smoother, I think you can actually see the difference in this one. So if we change it from to sharper, you can see if you, especially when you look in there, if we change that to smoother, it sort of just makes it ever so slight and I find that's gonna work better because we're sort of hacking it, I guess, to get your slow motion. You kind of want it to be smoother. We don't need a sharper image. So by having it smoother, it's gonna give the illusion of better slow motion, but that is definitely super usable. And if we like, we go here and we have Enhance better, and we're gonna change, change it to smoother. I think that looks really, really good. And if we change this to back to nearest, which is what we had at the start, see how choppy it is. Like it's just really just quite jarring as opposed to frame blend and even straight away, like you can see it blends those frames together really well. If we go to nearest and frame blend, we get a, results straight away that we can see there. So we play that back, we got frame blend, or we got really choppy footage. So yeah, just a couple of different options there. Play, obviously, depending on your clip, something might work better. So for this particular clip, optical flow seems to work really well. But then with this one here, obviously optical flow created that weird artifacting. So we're gonna use frame blend for this one. And just playing around with the settings, depending on what your computer handle, will give you different results. So there you go guys, hopefully you learned something from this video and you can go out and start using some of those clips that you've filmed at 24 frames a second, 30 frames a second and start slowing them down and getting some usable results from it. If you enjoyed the video guys, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content from myself. And yeah, until the next video guys, see ya.